Hello my tech friends, well today is going to be a really exciting video as we're going to be testing every motherboard manufacturer's RGB implementation to see once and for all who does RGB the best. This is going to be an utter face-off between Asus Aura versus Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0 versus MSI Mystic Lighting versus ASRock Polychrome. So who will outshine the competition? Who will light the path for others to follow? Who is light years ahead and who is at an all-time glow? I'm not even sorry. Let's find out. So I'm talking to all of you RGB lovers wanting to get the most customizable experience, the blingiest, ballerous aesthetic for your rig, and to tell the world that you're not just a gamer, you're a f***ing champion. And to do that, you don't just need RGB, you need the best RGB. Well today, we're going to figure out which motherboard manufacturer can offer you that. And don't miss a future video where I'm going to show you how to get any addressable RGB device with either of the typical connectors working with Corsair IQ. Yep, that's right. Figured it out and I'm going to show you that soon. So get subscribed, turn on notifications and join our humble little TechLens community. But for now, let's test some RGB. Firstly, the important part before we get lit. What are we actually testing today? Well, we have four motherboards and I bought one each from Asus, Gigabyte, ASRock and MSI for this test. All of which have at least one addressable three pin RGB header and one non-addressable four pin RGB header. We also have one addressable RGB CPU cooler with both fan and tower lighting. And you can check out the review for that up in the corner. We also have two addressable RGB strips and two non-addressable RGB strips. We're going to plug all of these into each motherboard, download the appropriate software from the motherboard support page and review the RGB solution based on two factors. The lighting effects, including how many effects and the quality and customization of the effects, as well as the compatibility and integration with other software and hardware components. Stuff like G-Skill RAM, Hue, Razer Synapse integration, and stay tuned to the end because I'm going to give each of them a rating and a score out of 10 to figure out who's king. But what we won't be testing is the motherboard's built-in LEDs as they're a hardware implementation that will vary based on board, even with the same manufacturer. We won't score any bugs. I'll comment on them if I see them, but bugs come and go with each release. So you may have bugs I don't or don't have bugs I do. And lastly, we won't take into consideration any device that's not connected to an RGB header on the motherboard to make this test as fair as possible. But quick disclaimer before we change things up and get into RGB testing camera position, there is going to be a lot of flashing lights during this RGB comparison. If this could affect you due to any pre-existing condition, please take any appropriate measures or stop watching the video. We have enough issues going on with the world right now. I cannot have you injured from an RGB comparison video. That would just be ridiculous. But take that into consideration and we will get onto the fun stuff. Starting off with Gigabyte RGB Fusion. When you launch the app, you have access to global RGB settings. So whichever effect you choose here, every compatible device will update to that effect. So what I'll do is I'll show you the eight different global RGB lighting effects that include static, pulse, flash, double flash, color cycle, and random, which flashes a random connected device a random effect, as well as two dynamic lighting effects, which are music and game, which synchronize to what's happening on your computer. This seems pretty bare bones, and I'm disappointed that none of these effects utilize the primary functionality of a connected addressable RGB device. Well, that is until you dive a little deeper down the rabbit hole. When you click on the motherboard, you can select and change each of the attached devices independently by clicking on the header they're connected to, which is a really nice and intuitive implementation. So quickly going over the non-addressable header, you are limited to the same static pulse flash, double flash, and color cycle from the global lighting effects, which behave exactly the same as they previously did. So nothing new and exciting there. But going into the addressable header, this is where the magic happens. You can see that we have a lot more options that now include digital wave, a cycling color wave with distinct color per LED, digital aim which displays your selected color as a base with two white LEDs that flow across the strip, digital B is a faded trail lighting effect spanning eight LEDs, digital C, I'm really sorry I somehow skipped digital C, digital D is a wave color cycle, digital E is a faded trail that starts at either end meeting in the middle, and digital F is a single LED moving down the strip to stack at the bottom changing the stack's color when it lands. This one is quite unique. Digital G is a seizure inducing color wave that alternates odd and even skipped LEDs. F it, let's crank the speed on this one. 
Oh God, would you even ever use this effect? Let me know in the comments. Digital H is the same as F, a single LED moving down the strip to stack at the bottom, but it is a set color you define. And Digital I, which is the same seizure effect as Digital G, but you get to choose your seizure color. An important note that you may have picked up on in the testing is that, at least with this version of RGB Fusion 2.0, it expects that the connected addressable RGB device will have 20 LEDs or less. This means that the effect will repeat in 20 LED increments. It's not an issue for the CPU cooler, which has about 10 or 12 LEDs, but this does show on the LED strip, which has 24. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to manually set the number of LEDs in the software and configure the effect to span the entire strip or device. And how noticeable it is really depends on the effect that you choose. It's extremely obvious in an effect like Digital F, but absolutely unnoticeable in Color Wave. But this really might be a deal breaker for some, and I'd really like to see a way to configure this in a future version. But one thing that I really do appreciate is that you can configure the output for the LEDs. Many LED strips actually swap the red, green, and blue channels around, unfortunately, which means that it completely messes with your aesthetics. You may actually select green, but then you'll display red because it's getting a red channel converted to green or green channel converted to red. And this is really annoying, but Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0 allows you to manually configure this in the software. So big points to Gigabyte for including that. So with these 16 effects, it covers the standard effects you would probably expect and some unique ones you wouldn't. But what about compatibility with other devices? Well, Gigabyte support page shows all of the hardware compatible with RGB Fusion 2.0. And like the other manufacturers, some of the items are completely fucking stupid. Like this RGB splitter cable is compatible, implying that other RGB splitters aren't, which makes absolutely no sense. It's a fucking splitter cable. But the memory section is useful as memory requires integration into the software. So Gigabyte State 21 memory product lines compatible with RGB Fusion 2.0, including ones from major manufacturers like Corsair, G... Corsair? Corsair. Corsair, G-Skill, and Kingston, which is great. And an additional level of integration is that you can sync RGB Fusion to an Android or iOS app, so Gigabyte are definitely going to get an extra point for compatibility. That is a pretty neat feature. Next up, we have Azeroth Polychrome. And when you launch the application, you can see all of the connected devices highlighted in white. By clicking one of them, you're able to apply any effect changes to that specific device. But by default, the Apply All button is selected, making any effect changes global changes. I'll run over the effects with you now, which includes static, breathing, strobe, cycling, which is a strobe between red, green, and blue, random, which is a randomized color strobe, and wave, which is the slowest color wave I have ever seen. Even with the speed completely cranked, this is stupidly slow. Then lastly, a music dynamic mode. I originally thought that you needed to go deeper into the system to set up any addressable effects, similar to Gigabyte RGB Fusion. But no matter what I did, this is all that I got. Maybe I'm missing something, as I've seen addressable effects in the Azeroth Polychrome promotional video, so you may actually get a different experience depending on your motherboard. But I can't access any of them, even with addressable devices plugged into the addressable header. So I'm going to have to judge this based on my experience of build, download, and play. That simple and it's not great. With no addressable RGB effects and only five typically standard effects. If I could access any of their addressable effects as seen in their promotional video, which are water, rainbow, spring, stack, cram, and scan, I would have a much more positive experience of polychrome and I will highlight this in the final score. But as for compatibility and integration with other devices, Polychrome is compatible with Razer Synapse, which is a great integration to be a part of. As Razer hold a sizable chunk of the PC peripheral market share, many users already have Razer products and likely use Synapse. But in terms of other hardware compatibility, there are 26 different memory product lines that are compatible with Polychrome, which does include G-Skill and Kingston, but it does not include Corsair, which is a really big shame because a lot of people use Corsair memory modules and they won't be able to control them through Polychrome. This will have to be reflected later on in the score. And now we're going to move on to Aura before we finish off with something surprising from MSI. The drop down at the top of each effect allows you to select whether to apply the effect globally or choose a specific device, allowing you to keep selecting new devices and applying effects individually to customize them all. However, some effects will have to be global. All of the effects include static, breathing, color cycle, rainbow, which displays the effect really well over addressable and non-addressable devices, comet, 
which lights up three LEDs, sending them down each device in order, which can be configured in the sequence section. For non-addressable devices, the entire device or strip will flash. Moving on to flash and dash, which lightly flashes an LED down the strip. You then have wave, which fills the LEDs on the strip or the device in order, and then does a flip it up and reverse it. Glowing yo-yo is the same as wave, but there is a constant soft illumination on the strip behind the effect. Starry night, and I've mentioned this before in previous videos, but this is one of my favorite effects ever. It's a constant color pulsing a random LED on occasion. Absolutely something about it. It's subtle, unpredictable, and not too in your face, which I really like. We also have strobing, which actually strobes connected devices out of sync, producing a more interesting strobe effect, in my opinion. And then we have smart, which allows you to set up the lighting to be connected connected to internal sensors such as temperature to glow more red as the system gets hotter. And music which is similar to the other music effects, it's a dynamic lighting effect based on sound. There's a couple effects and customization options implemented into Aura that I really appreciate. The rainbow, comet and flash and dash effects allow you to change the sequence order to control how the effect flows through your system. You can also set a gradient between two different colours for these effects. This means that if you'd like the effect to flow between red, purple, and blue, for example, ignoring all other colors, this is absolutely possible and really takes the customization up a level. Another customization feature that Aura has is allowing you to set the number of LEDs on a connected addressable device. This eliminates the issue with the effect duplicating every set number of LEDs as seen with other motherboard manufacturers. Therefore, we can easily configure the effect to span the entire strip or device. That is a really good job, Asus. Similarly to RGB Fusion, you have the ability to configure the strips and remap the red, green, and blue channels. If the strip you're using is wired them up incorrectly or dissimilar from your motherboard, this is a great feature. As for compatibility with other devices, Aura gets big points for being Philips Hue compatible. A really nice touch to be able to control your room lighting and maybe get yourself into game or study mode depending on what you're doing, while also being compatible with 37 different memory product families from manufacturers including Corsair, G-Skill and Kingston. So both the effects and the compatibility are better than the previous offerings from Gigabyte and ASRock. And the final score will definitely reflect this. And last but definitely not least is MSI Mystic Lighting. And boy, where, where do we start? So at the top, above the selected device image, you can choose which specific device you want to change the effect of, or you can link and make global effect changes in the link section. So what I'll do is I'll take you through all of the many, many effects for the devices connected to the motherboard before we determine a winner between these four motherboard manufacturers. So number one is Rainbow, and this is a flowing and breathing color cycle. We then have Meteor, which flows two LEDs down the addressable strip and flashes the non-addressable one. Stack is similar to Meteor, but speeds up at the beginning and uses a lot more LEDs in the effect. There's Breathing, which is exactly what you think it is. Flashing is a strobe effect. Double Flash just strobes twice. Steady is a static light effect. Lightning seems to use red as a base color and flashes some LEDs white. It's a really cool effect, but I'd like to be able to change the colors on this one. CPU temperature is a dynamic effect based on how hot your CPU is. Random sets a random effect for a connected device. Pop, Jazz, Play and Movie are all audio dynamic modes. For Planetary, I'm not even sure how to describe this effect to you guys, but it's definitely unique. Good job MSI, but I really would have liked to see a way to customize the colors and potentially have full spectrum color cycle. Double Meteor flows different color sets of LEDs through the strip and color changes on each pass. Energy sets both the addressable and non-addressable device, a user-defined base color that breathes, flowing a single different colored LED down the addressable device, which changes on each pass, while the non-addressable strip flashes that color. That's quite unique and cool. Blink is a strobing color cycle. Clock is a color cycle that fills. Color Pulse is a breathing color cycle. And Color Shift is your standard color cycle. Color Wave is basically the same as Double Meteor, but a single color cycling each pass. And then Marquee is a cool effect that reminds me of Carnival or Funfair. Fuck me, there's still a few to go, bear with me. I'll go through them. Rainbow Wave is your standard flowing color cycle implemented well. And then Visor sends light up and down the strip while cycling colors. Rainbow Flashing is a multicolored strobe that 100% hurts my eyes to look at and rainbow double flashing just hurts my eyes twice as much holy shit, that was a lot of effects that was 21 effects in total if i group all of the music effects together which i think is probably fair enough and with that msi covers all of the standard effects as well as many others that are quite unique so if you want the most effects 
Miss Seat Lighting has that without a doubt. But as for control and customizability, there's a few things that you're missing. Number one is being able to color calibrate the strip like you can do in Fusion 2.0 and Aura, being able to configure the red, green, and blue channels, and also being able to set the number of LEDs for the connected addressable device. So the effect will duplicate. As you can see with the double meteor effect, for example, the effect starts on both LED1 and LED21 of the addressable strip. And then for compatibility and integration, MSI supports 40 different memory product families, including Corsair, Kingston, and G-Skill, which is higher than even Asus, while also being able to control Philips Hue lighting and Nanoleaf devices too, adding an extra layer of integration that will definitely be reflected in the results. So before we recap and score them, comment below what you think the order should be who's in first place, who's in last and why, before you watch the rest of the video. It'd actually be really interesting to see what you guys think before you watch further, so no cheating. So I have actually done a weighted calculation and I'll drop a link to the data sheet that I created to calculate these scores in the video description below. But let's go on to the scoring. Coming in in last place is ASRock Polychrome and we all saw that coming, didn't we? Getting a two out of 10 for effects and customizability for not being able to configure the RGB channels, but primarily due to only having six basic non-addressable effects with an addressable capable motherboard. Although I would imagine that this would be bumped up to like a five or a six if I was able to test the effects in their promotional video. And then for the compatibility and integration category, ASRock Polychrome gets a 6 out of 10 for not having the least amount of memory support, it actually doesn't, but for no compatible Corsair memory options, only supporting G-Skill and Kingston out of the memory behemoths, which does take a hit to its final score, but they do recover some points for being Razer Synapse integrated, which is a really nice touch. In third place, we have Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0, implementing a pretty decent array of effects that I think will appeal to a lot of users, while also allowing you to configure the channels for your RGB strips if needed. That's a great job, but it does lose some points for not allowing you to configure the LED count on a connected addressable device giving it a six out of 10 for effect and customizability. As for compatibility and integration, Gigabyte RGB Fusion gets a seven out of 10 for being compatible with 21 different memory product families, which is actually the least in the list, but Corsair, G-Skill and Kingston are all in the list, which weighs it higher than support for something like Kimtigo memory in Polychrome. And to top it off, Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2.0 is mobile app supported on Android and iOS, which is cool. Maybe not as useful as Synapse and Hue, but they do get some points for that. So final two, who will be RGB King? And in second place, we have Asus Aura. Having the least number of effects other than ASRock, and especially if ASRock had implemented any addressable RGB stuff, Aura managed to claim back a lot of points by having some great effects. The fact that they were the most customizable with gradient mode, sequence configuration, a configurable RGB header, and also being able to set the number of LEDs in a connected addressable RGB device. This means that though there aren't as many effect options, there's a lot more that you can do with these effects compared to other motherboard manufacturers implementations. But where Aura is slightly beaten out is the compatibility and integration section. Though Aura still has the second highest memory compatibility, including Corsair, Kingston, and G-Skill at 37, and big points for Philips Hue compatibility, it is just slightly beaten out in this category, and well done Asus, seven out of 10 in this category too. That leaves our winner, MSI Mystic Lighting. With sheer brute numbers, there are just so many effects to choose from. It's just inevitable that you're going to find something that you're happy with. Though points have to be deducted for not being as customizable due to the lack of configurable headers, not being able to set the number of LEDs on a connected device. MSI Mystic Fusion does tie for first place in the effects and customizability category with seven out of 10, purely by cramming a shit ton of effects in there and having lighting profiles to change between them. If they took a bit of time to implement some more customizability across the effects, it would really take it to a whole nother level. But where MSI just managed to come out on top is the compatibility and integration section having 40 memory product lines, including all of the ones that are most popular among users. Mystic Lighting is also the only one to have two different software integrations, Hue and Nanoleaf. And while Nanoleaf is not going to be weighted the same as Hue, because it's likely to appeal to less users, it will still be a great addition to those who want a full battle station ecosystem, giving MSI Mystic Fusion a nine out of 10 in this category. Well. Thank you for checking out the video. I really hope that it was fun and informative for you. The next video will actually be on getting any standard addressable device like ARGB strip or the CPU cooler that I use in this video, working with IQ. Not only can this be done with any motherboard, but IQ has some customizability way beyond even what Asus offer. So it may be a good solution upgrade for anything in this video. 
So why not get subscribed and join our TechLens community? Otherwise, thumbs up if this video was useful, comment with any questions, love and support, and I'll see you in the next video.